will see the main principle of timing and spacing. Timing makes the difference and can really give an edge to your animation. As I said in the previous lessons, the timing is the speed and the rhythm of your shot, how many frames you use to make a movement, and the spacing is the variation of the speed during this movement. If you have to reproduce a fast movement, you need the last frame. For a slower movement, more frames. On what basis you should choose your timing? It depends on different aspects. For example, if you are creating an animation of an object based on physical reactions and properties like a bouncing ball, you have to take in consideration the type of object, its weight, the gravity force, the type of contact surface and other aspects. A rubber ball would have an eccentric bounce, uh, the gravity force bring it down on the ground and it bounces for several times before and its movement. The height of the bounce gradually decreases within the forward movement. But if we have a balloon instead of a ball, it will take much more frames to land on the ground because it's much lighter, uh, so the timing in this case will be slower. If the ball is either like a bowling ball, uh, it would have a very fast timing because of the weight and would have a very few unshorted bounces. So let's decide our timing. The ball falls from point A to point B, let's say it takes 10 frames to fall on the ground. Uh, this movement is generated by the gravity that pushed the ball on the ground. As it gets closer to the ground, it has an acceleration due to the decrease of air resistance. So we have more frames when the ball is high in the air and less frame before the contact. After the contact, we have a reverse of the acceleration. Now the ball is pushed upward and it leaves the ground, moving fast at first, and then when it reaches the high point, it slows down his movement due to the opposite forces, the gravity that pulls it downward and its own speed going upward. Any bounce lose speed and force, the time is slow down, so the height of the bounce. Another physical phenomenon that happens during the bounces is the deformation of the volume or squash and stretch. The ball deforms its volume during the bounce, stretching before and after the contact and squashing during the contact. Why? Because uh, the gravity pushed the ball against the surface, causing its deformation. This is reality. In animation, we can exaggerate to reach a more cartoon effect. But remember that the ball don't change its volume, it just deforms it. So during the stretch, the volume increases in height and decreases in width. During the squash, it increases in width and decreases in height. But keep in mind that not all the type of objects need the squash and stretch. It depends on the object properties and material. A rubber ball can squash, an art bowling ball doesn't squash. When the ball bounces moving forward, it follows an elliptical path in the air, an arc, that gives to the bounces a natural feeling. The forward movement starts linear and slow down in the last part, before the ball stops its movement. But how apply timing and spaces to my character animation? As I said, the timing is the speed, but also the rhythm of your movement. In character animation, you have to consider the action you're going to tell, the character attitude, the character emotions, the accent of the dialogue, and other aspects. The choices of the timing is finalized to make the performance perfectly readable and interesting. That's why it's also important to don't create all the bits and accent at the same distance. Add variation in the timing and rhythm to make your animation more interesting. A good tip is to use a stopwatch to time yourself during the shot in order to have a realistic reference to start with and to see how your body reacts to different actions and how you reach a certain position or how fast you do it. Take your time to imagine the performance before start to animate. Try to visualize the character movements, gesture and expression. Start to animate without have a clear in mind what we want to tell and how we want to show it can create a not very readable or convincing animation. So take a break, have a coffee, listen to music or go outside, do whatever you want, just try to visualize the animation. This is my method. I always see the animation in my mind first, so then when I start to animate I already have clear in mind what to do and how to do it. A quick example of timing applied to character animation, a character that turns its head. In this movement, uh, she turns fast because she hears something, so I use 10 frames. But if we use more frames, for example 30 frames, we can have a totally different turn. She's now very relaxed and she's looking around. So we have the same action, a simple turn, but the different amount of frames makes the two animation completely different. Another thing that we can manage during the turn is the spacing. When we create the first and last pose, the software creates the linear interpolation between these two poses. Let's put in practice another principle, slow in and slow out. If we slow down the spacing in the last part, creating an in-between close to the final one, uh, we do the same at the beginning. And if we also add a moving gold at the end, uh, so the movement don't freeze but continue to move just a little bit, just enough to be perceived by the human eye. And we can also add some details like the overlap of the air. As you can see, the result is much, much better and the character is more alive. Let's do the same with the slower turn. At the beginning, we have just two poses and the linear interpolation. Then we had a breakdown pretty close to the first pose where she also makes enough blink. Then we had the slow in and slow out the moving gold and the air overlap. And now the two turns have a much more interesting spacing, slow, fast, slow. 
instead of linear, and this makes the character more alive and appealing. Shall we also talk about the other principle we've seen so far? Because exaggeration can be applied to all these other principles as well. Exaggerate the timing, the overlap, the question stretch, and the anticipation. What does it mean? It means to go out from the limit of the realist and exaggerate the action and the poses to make the result more instantly readable for the user. It can be applied on key poses, pushing lines of action, exaggerating the way you represent a feeling or an action in breakdowns, exaggerating the arcs and the amount of squash and stretch and breaking some joints. Character design, exaggerating shapes, proportion and caricature elements. Story, exaggerating a concept and action to make it stronger. Poses, exaggerating the representation of a mode or an action. And timing and spacing, make it more cartoony, exaggerating the contrast between acceleration and deceleration of a movement. But as animator, we have to focus just on some of these. But it's not as simple as the word will suggest. The amount of exaggeration is based on the style of your animation, the storyline and intention of the scene. When we exaggerate, we must be sure that it helps to make the action more clear, add energy to the action and make it more readable when you have few frames to show an acting or a feeling. Exaggerate doesn't mean to do something completely out of any physics principle and realism, but it means do something starting from realism and exaggerate it to make it more interesting, enchanting and push an idea. It gradually increases depending on the level of cartoon style of your animation. Do it in key poses, pushing your poses to clearly show the mood, always based on the style you need. You have different solutions depending on how much realism you want. In this example, we can see a normal jump and this other one more cartoony and exaggerated. If we compare the two jumps, we can see that the first one is more close to reality, there's a small anticipation, the jump distance is not so long, so this is very close to how a real jump looks like. In this other version, I made a bigger anticipation, the hip goes much more down and the arms raise more, then I overstretch the body during the push, especially the legs and the chest, the jump is higher and there's a slower spacing when it stays in the air, so he jump very fast and then decelerate in the air. Then he accelerates when he falls, I stretch the body again and when he lands I made the feelings that he's heavier with the hips that goes very low and the big pose before he stands up again. Also the jump distance is longer compared to the more realistic one. Also can use it in breakdowns when you broke a joint during an action. This is not reality but it's an exaggeration of the arc that you will create with this movement. So this is a very clear example of how to exaggerate a movement. In expression, you can exaggerate the organic feel of the face, make it super flexible, exaggerate the symmetry, exaggerate the lines of action, just as for the body poses, to make the acting and the feeling more convincing. When you stretch a face, push it to give the idea that the head and the muscle could really stretch as a balloon of water. Stretch the eyes, the mouth and the neck, and use the shoulder to emphasize the push upward that we have during the take. Do the same when you squash the head, press it in the chest and raise the shoulders. Squash and press the eyes between the eyebrows that push down and the cheeks that push up. Now let's see how to exaggerate the timing and spacing and the squash and stretch. Starting from a realistic bouncing ball, you can create a version more cartoony and exaggerated. When the ball is in the air, we have a slower spacing and when it falls, we have a big acceleration. We can also exaggerate the amount of squash and stretch keeping the stretch longer during the fall and make a bigger squash in the contact. In this simple animation, you can exaggerate the timing and the spacing to add energy to the sheen and if this would be a character, we would have two different jumps and the exaggerated one with more contrast in the spacing and an exaggerated use of the squash stretch result more cartoon and appealing. <laughs>